going to stand by. Honorable Speaker, at some point during debate, it was mentioned that every financial year, every year would keep having uh, financial bills. We are going to have a finance bill for this year. We are going to have a finance bill for 2025, 2026, or whatever time we will continue having finance bills. But I want to say, Honorable Speaker, that as much as we want to have finance bills every year, it would be prudent, Honorable Speaker, that if we have an act, that act should be allowed or should be given time to operationalize. We run it for a time, Honorable Speaker, so that we are able to critically analyze or critically make observations on its goodness and on its badness. And even in the course of debate, Honorable Speaker, it was mentioned that probably the young people we are seeing rise up out there may not know really about this finance bill. But I can assure my colleague and my friend that these young people are well informed, Honorable KJ. At times they are even ahead of us with information. And these are people who know how to come and dig information from wherever they are able to get it. So we should not uh, undermine their capacity to be informed on matters that happen in Parliament. And in any case, Honorable Speaker, these are the next cohort of parliamentarians. So I think they're in the exercise of practicing, but they are also exercising their democratic right. They have the right to picketing. So if they do so as young people, uh, we should give them room, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, having said that, I also want to appreciate what the committee has done. The committee listened and the committee made uh, amendments. So we have on one hand the committee report, but also we have on one hand, the committee did proposals for amendments, and on another hand, we have the bill in itself. So that gives room for hope. And from the point where I stand, I may not be very good, Honorable Speaker, at estimating the age of the substantive chairperson of the Finance Committee. But I can literally guess, Honorable Speaker, that he's a young person. So I want to tell the Chair of Finance Committee, my brother and the Honorable Member of Parliament, you are a young person and the young people are looking at your capability and your capacity to run a major docket like that. Let us not take things for granted. It is a career you are building. And I want to say that there are many, many, many issues to reject this bill on. When we talk about not uh, bringing uh, taxation or not uh, via, uh, putting, uh, making gluten-free bread taxable, what exactly do we mean? What is the science behind it? What is the issue on allergies about this? Was it medically informed? So if we start tearing and scrutinizing this bill, Honorable Speaker, to the extent that we tear it apart, all of it will be rejected. But for me and Rangwe people, Honorable Speaker, on the bill, I stand to reject. No. Thank you, Lillian. Uh, Taitumu. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. Taitumu and others, those who want to speak, stop menacing the speaker with, the, with hand gestures. I can see you, and I'll give you a chance to speak. Okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. I arise to support the bill. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the committee. First of all, when I went through the document, I saw 203 entities were given an opportunity to present their views in connection or in relation to the bill. The committee listened to their views objectively and made various 
adjustment to the clauses that were punitive, the Kenyans, and mainly the Mamboga and other uh, citizens of this country. Mr. Speaker, I have heard you make several pronouncements that those who have amendments, they tender their amendments before one tomorrow. This is to say that uh, the bill is, te uh, is tendered or the bill is brought to the parliament so that the members can get an opportunity to make an amendment and not to reject that are meant for the posterity of this country. Mr. Speaker, this government inherited and disjointed education structure that requires massive and colossal amounts of money to make it raw. One, Mr. Speaker, 46,000 teachers are about to transition from uh, the interns to JSS to uh, permanent and personal basis. Mr. Speaker, the clauses that were unbarred were unwrapped, others were amended to make sure that this bill benefits the citizens of this country. Young Kenyans have jammed our ponds with messages of reject. But when you uh, engage them by asking them to expound on the reasons as to why we should reject, some go mute, majority of them go mute. The reason is that they have been confused. They have been poisoned because the truth is being laced with poison. But the truth of the matter, Mr. Speaker, is that this bill is progressive. It is progressive in the sense that punitive clauses that would have affected uh, these Kenyans were removed. For instance, the motor circulation uh, tax was removed. This one would have drastically affected the Mambaboga, anybody who uses the vehicle, those who transport the cabbages, the uh, tomatoes, and the rest, or those who use even provokes and other modes of transportation to make sure that their merchandise reach the market. Mr. Speaker, this is the first time when the salaried people will have pay as one deducted after the statutory deductions have removed. This one will have a positive index on their net pay. And for this reason, it shows that uh, this bill is good. Taxes on mobile phones transfers, they have remained as they were, and they have not been uh, uh, handed as it is uh, seriously exaggerated. On VAT on financial services for foreign exchanges, Mr. Speaker, those transactions, those uh, exchanges have also remained as they were. VAT on bread, Mr. Speaker, it was very contentious. But in the wisdom of committee, through the advice and the democratic space that it gave the stakeholders of this country, the experts, the professionals, and even faith-based organizations, they saw it worthy to have it removed. Their levy and other uh, levies that were not necessary to be levied on Kenyans were removed. Mr. Speaker, this country requires money. Thank you, uh, Taitumu, member for Kiminini. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. Representing the good people of Kiminini, we know that this finance bill is supposed to be a mechanism to raise funds for the government programs. However, if the government widens the taxation uh, mechanism that affects the people, then I have a right to represent my people 
and indicate where it's not right. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, we must reduce and rationalize our expenditure. We must live within our means. Looking at this particular bill, Mr. Speaker, we con completely left out the principle of a sovereign state whereby the Britain Woods are the ones dictating what we have to put in our budget. Someone sitting in Washington and the IMF does not really understand the pain that the local Kenyan goes through by inflicting a, a specific taxation on bread, things like sanitary pads, an example. And I would like to say, Mr. Speaker, it's also important that the templates that have been uh, provided by the World Bank, which have worked in other countries like Croatia or wherever, using those templates in Kenya, it cannot work. So it is very clear that, Mr. Speaker, and again, looking at the other side of the house, if you look at something like uh, diapers, you expect that being having mostly the younger generation on that side will take care of basic items like diapers. This morning, uh, Mr. Speaker, I saw the presentation by the majority leader, which listed four companies that are producing uh, diapers and even sanitary pads. But figures don't lie. If you look at those four companies, they are not able to meet the demand of the sanitary pads or the diapers that are produced in this republic, meaning that majority of those items that are used in this republic are actually imported. What I would have expected from this bill, Mr. Speaker, is for the bill to also state good mechanism where we're encouraging even manufacturers to come in and manufacture locally. Basically, what this bill has done is to try and protect some local manufacturers and, of course, not promoting competency or proactiveness. We should not, in the spirit of protecting local manufacturers, um, try to put more uh, uh, taxes, especially on critical items like this. And Mr. Speaker, this reminds me um, in 1775, between the month of May, uh, I mean April and May, where we had, within the month, we had over 300 riots, which were actually the bread riots. And yesterday, we've seen actually people hitting the streets because of that. And I'll not be surprised, Mr. Speaker, if we don't panel beat this and ensure that we have a good um, financial bill whereby we will make history as the first country, not just on the continent, but globally, where we will have riots of diapers or sanitary clothes. So, Mr. Speaker, my expectation from this presentation, we having a lot of minerals. We've got iron ore, we've got copper, graphite, magnesia, nickel, all this we have. I would expect that there are smarter ways of seeing on how we can really utilize and take advantage of our natural resources. An example, Mr. Speaker, I'd also um, expect that on items that are causing some social disorder, like alcohol, an example, we focus on such items where we put even 100% taxes. But touching on items like bread, like sanitary pads, that one, I think, Mr. Speaker, uh, really creates a lot of fault on this um, particular bill. So at this point, Mr. Speaker, I oppose this bill. Thank you. Timothy Toroitich. Member for Maraquet West. Give him the mic. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to contribute on this uh, very important bill. Honorable Speaker, from the onset, I rise to support the letter, the spirit, and the intent of this particular piece of proposed legislation. Honorable Speaker, but with a rider, I support the same, Honorable Speaker, as proposed by the committee. Honorable Speaker, the reason why I say I support the bill with the amendments by the committee is for the reason that, Honorable Speaker, the bill as it was brought to this House is a bill that was in the mind of the executive. Honorable Speaker, the reason why this House is given time to interrogate a bill is so that we can get the input of the members of Parliament here and also get 
the input of the members of the public through public participation. Honorable Speaker, when the Committee of Finance went to collect the views of the public, Honorable Speaker, they never went to collect the views of Kenya Kwanza public. They never went to collect the views of Azimio supporters. They never went to co collect the views of individuals. They went to collect the views of collective Kenyans. Honorable Speaker, if this bill, if there was no amendment to this bill, personally, I would have opposed this bill. But because of the amendments that has been reflected in the report of the committee, I will support the bill purely based on the proposed amendments by the committee. Honorable Speaker, there were acrimonious, there were contentious clauses in that particular bill. But Honorable Speaker, courtesy of the amendment, we, the mem members of the public were told about the 2.5 percent. Honorable Speaker, that proposed amendment by the committee is the one I support. Honorable Speaker, I have read the report in its entirety, the voluminous report. Honorable Speaker, the 2.5 percent on the issue of uh, tax on motor vehicle has been deleted, pass one to the opinion of the public. Honorable Speaker, I commend the committee led by Kimani Kuria. Honorable Speaker, they said that the 2.5 percent was based on the Income Tax Act. Honorable Speaker, they said the Income Tax Act only deals with income and not assets as the motor vehicle. Honorable Speaker, that is the reason why I support. Honorable Speaker, second reason. This year, the Committee on Budget proposed certain fundamental amendments and they brought a budget for this house. One of the issues led by Ndini Nyoro was the issue of equality in terms of allocation of resources in, in so far as electricity is concerned. Honorable Speaker, every constituency was given 50 million. I saw my friends from the other aisle supporting that proposal. But Honorable Speaker, the question is this, how do we fund, how do we get the 50 million if we don't pass this finance bill? Honorable Speaker, the issue of CDF, all of us from this aisle, from the opposition, supported the increment in CDF. Honorable Speaker, if we don't have enough money to support that increment, how shall we as a country or as members of parliament get that particular funding? Honorable Speaker, on the issue of JS internships, Honorable Speaker, there has been demonstration outside there. The, the, the internship teachers have been saying they want to be confirmed. Honorable Speaker, I sit in the Committee of Education and Research of, of this House. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, in this budget, we have allocated... Yes, what is the point of order from your neighbor? Uh, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I rise on uh, standing order number 91. Is it in order for the Honorable Member to mislead the House that the budget proposed an increment on CDF, yet we know CDF is a percentage of the collection. Honorable Speaker, it is, not, it is not rocket science that the constituencies are receiving, depending on the number of words, but this time round we have an increment of 30 million per constituency. Honorable Speaker, that is not rocket science. It is an increment that has been reflected in the budget and therefore it must be funded. Finally, Honorable Speaker, even though I support this bill, there has been you and cry outside there. Honorable Speaker, it is incumbent upon the executive to ensure that money collected in, the, in this year's financial bill. Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Timothy. Wanjala Rafael. But my card is here. Uh, Wajala shall be heard in silence so yes. that he can be able to be silent when others speak. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I beg to oppose this motion. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, this finance bill of 2024, National Assembly Bill number 30, of 2024, Mr. Speaker, 
I am also cognizant to the fact that this bill went through the first reading on 13th May 2024 and was committed to the Departmental Committee on Finance and, and, and the National Planning for Consideration Committee and, and reporting to the House under the provision of standing order number 127. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm also cognizant of the fact that this bill has 65 clauses and seeks to amend laws on matters such as the Income Tax Act, Cap 47, one, the Value Added Tax, Cap 476, the Exercise Duty Act, the Tax Procedures, Act Cap 469, among others. And Mr. Speaker, you have heard some members saying that if we oppose this bill and it collapses, they say then we will not be able to collect taxes. I want to inform the members that if this bill collapses, we already still have a bill in force of 2023 that will continue. What we are only doing is that we are amending. It's not that there is no another bill. We are just amending the previous bill. Therefore, when this one collapses, members, there is nothing that has gone wrong. We will still continue. And that is what is, some of us are praying for. Because, Mr. Speaker, you are also aware that uh, last financial year, 2023, uh, we have a bill that was supposed to collect over 350 billion. Now, in this one, 2024, we are proposing, 2024-2025, to, to get additional revenue of 302 point something billion. But even the other 352, Mr. Speaker, we, we were not able to collect. So I don't know why this government of Kenya Kwisha, sorry, Kenya Kwanza, they are too over ambitious to do what they may not be able to attain. Mr. Speaker, sir, even though these measures might be part of the general effort to enhance domestic resources, mobilization and reducing dependence on foreign aid, as they have always said, and loans. And yet, to us, we know very well that there is, this is the government that within less than two years, they have borrowed more than any other government, although they claim not to have been borrowing. It should be done with the sensitivity required and the necessary understanding of the economic situation that Kenyans, situation of the common Mwanainchi is already um, shouldering a heavy cost of living in this country. Member for Chandamwe, what's out of order? Ka. Is it in order for the Honorable MP who is actually an, uh, I mean, uh, a member who's actually at, who has been here for quite a long time, he's actually reading instead of uh, debating. In if, thank, thank you, Honorable uh, Member for Changwame. I was actually about to bring it to the attention of Honorable Rafael Wanjala that it is out of order to read a speech in the guise of a debate. And uh, you are a very senior member of the House. You know the standing orders. You can make reference to some aid memoir, but you cannot read a speech the way you are reading a speech. It is not made either. 
Yes, go ahead and debate the bill. Angela. Mr. Speaker, actually, I'm not reading, I'm referring. You are reading, but go no. on now. Mr. Speaker, and you also didn't ask him which standing order. Yes. That is the biasness we are talking about. Yes, Kimani, uh, order, Angela. Is it in order, Honorable Speaker, for the Honorable Angela to misinform this House that even if the budget even if, this finance, even if the finance bill were not to be passed, then the budget process would still continue. And he calls the Constitution. So Article, Article 220 of the Constitution, Honorable Speaker, on the form and content and timing of budgets, says one, budgets of the national and country government shall contain, shall contain, A, estimates of revenue and expenditure differentiating between the current and, and development expenditures, B, proposals for financing any anticipated deficit for the period to which they apply. Therefore, it is a constitutional requirement that when a budget is tabled, there must be the supply side of that expenditure as proposed on Article 220 of our Constitution. Yes, Angela. Mr. Speaker, I'm not opposed to what he is saying. What we are doing, we are just amending. And when you are amending, and a section you have amended collapses, the other act still continues. That's what I said. The, these, these are just newcomers. They don't know how this, uh, these things happen. My husband. My, Mr., my, 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 Mr. Speaker, sir, we know this government promised a lot, just like the previous governments have been promising Kenya that there will be industrialization in this country. And yet, there is nothing they are doing towards industrializing this country, but they have kept on telling us stories as they keep on collecting money, a lot of money, and we don't even see the value of that money where it goes, Mr. Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, even yesterday, what we saw in this country, Mr. Speaker, you know very well some of us were in the struggle from 1992 and we did away with the police state. But yesterday what happened in this country was a police state where police were mobilized to beat innocent young boys and girls.